Who said that? Oh, oh we're my live God, now. I'm on my page. Now we're live. Hi. <laughs> Hi, everyone. We're going to wait and see if we get some people to filter in here. That's funny. Yeah, at the bottom of my screen, it says, you're in the show. Everyone can see and hear you. Oh. Like from the minute I log in, so. Well, that would have been, I was everyone. <laughs> you know, Us. yesterday I called you, I think it was yesterday, and told you that you could have kept the white shit up north. <laughs> We got more of it today. <laughs> and it's cold. Mm -hmm. And I don't like it. Hi, Sam Henderson. Um, it sucks. I had to go sign some papers for some medicine. That they're going to try to put my, through my insurance at Dupixent for my asthma. Yep. And I did that after work. And I had to go just about 10 minutes further north than where I was at. So it's not very far. It the, the roads were god awful. Oh it, no. It was when I once I got to the office and I I was waiting for the, her to come out. I was like, oh wow, it's really pretty because it started really coming down, but it was big flakes. But then it got really, really ugly when I had to get back on the road <laughs> and drive. <laughs> it was rush hour, and it was a busy area, and that I didn't care for that much. Uh, I kept thinking, damn it, Tina, you could have kept this up there. <laughs> yeah, because you guys don't get much snow, do you? We haven't in a while. Yeah. We don't get very much. We got a boatload of it the other night, and then... It's just, just today, it's only been like maybe, I think they're calling for like an inch or something, but it's like real slick, mm -hmm. and fleshy because of what we already had. Mm -hmm. I was on 75 going 40 miles an hour, but so was everybody else. So, wow. I, mm -hmm. so it's like, if you That's guys are scared, stay off the road. I, you know, I can't say much. I'm one of those people. That, that you, you putter? I putter. You putter. <laughs> and I let people pass me and I wave to them as they go. Don't care. <laughs> Tina Marie's in the room and Ashley. Hi, Hi everybody. And Sammy. I was just chatting with Sam. Actually, Sam and Tina. I was just chatting with them not too long ago. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Yeah, we appreciate it. I know so Ashley. You want you want to see what I got today in the mail? Sure. I'm oh, so excited. Sure. I'm excited. What? Oh, hang on. Oh. I got a smudge stick from Three Sisters. Yes. There's it always smells so good. It smells so good. Did you this get? is one that she um that's special that they just um, made up for when you're doing um, like it's cleansing after investigations and stuff, right? It's good for cleansing after investigations. So wow. I ordered a couple of sticks and they, and they sent it up to me in Canada. Ooh. So when so I can actually start investigating again, I'm ready. <laughs> well, you can, you can investigate it in Canada, right? Yeah, <laughs> everything's everything's shut down. See, the problem is because we're on lockdown mm. and because of the stages that we're moving through up here, um, all of my museums that we usually go to are closed. Um, the halls that we usually rent are, um, you can't rent them out right now. So theaters, we've done a lot of theaters. They're not open right now. Um, it probably would have been a great time to do some restaurants. Oh, but again, yeah. we would have had to totally disinfect everything when we're done. Oh, that's true. Right. So we really haven't done anything. No, really um, anything. <laughs> what, what's that? I'm going to wear gloves and not touch anything. <laughs> yeah. Um, we have 
um, PO3 has a new fundraiser, not a new fundraiser, but fundraisers coming up hopefully in um, three different parts for one of the locations that we've been doing um, up here. So as long as everything goes according to plan, by June we'll be doing our fundraising again. So that was good. And um, my girlfriend has an old, like a hundred year old farmhouse that she said we could go investigate one Friday night if we get bored. And we're like, oh, okay. We're bored, we're bored. <laughs> we're bored, let's go. <laughs> I Say think Jack. Your farmhouse. Yeah, it's really neat. Um, it's, I haven't been inside the house. We've only been inside the um, garage in the back, but the garage in the back was the original house. Oh, okay. So it's really, really, really cool. Um, and Jax has created, like, she built the portal. Not created, but she built a portal, and she built uh, the SLS cam and stuff. So we're anxious to use it. We've only ever used it once. so And it worked. And it worked. It was cool. Yeah, it was really cool. Because I remember so. you, you know that it, it, it worked, it worked, it worked. <laughs> Yeah, you use it to work, and we got something in my like it worked when we tested it in my kitchen, which was hilarious because I've had a little I've had a little guy in my house lately, um, for probably the last six months, and you can hear him running up and down the stairs. I've had people see him. Um, I've seen like physically seen him. Has Martin which seen is, him? Martin hasn't. No, Martin's very, um, he's very empathic. He's not, um, he's no, no more than just empathic. But it's really, um, it's, he, it's crazy because he can affect people. He can affect people's moods as well as take on their moods. Oh. So like if, I, if I'm really sad, if he comes near me and we talk, I'm not sad anymore. Aww. Like it's really, or, or same with like, I have no temper with that kid at all. And anyone that knows me knows I'm a dragon. Like when I get angry, I get angry. Comes out. Never with that kid. Yeah. It's really, it's really bizarre. But when he, but I, when he has emotions, when he's sad, he'll take everybody down with him. <laughs> like, it's, it's, uh, I've never met such a strong empath. It's really, wow. it's really insane. Yeah. But my son, my oldest son, Hunter, is um, a, a medium. But he doesn't practice, like he shut it right down. But a couple of months ago, before he moved out, he said, there's something in your house. I oh, don't really? know what's in your house. Something was banging on my door and the whole house just feels weird. And I just, I need to get out of here. Your house is... <laughs> for lack of a better term, your house is effed up, Mom. I need to get out of here now. <laughs> Hi, Mark Ortiz. Hi, Tessa Luann. Now, that's odd because don't you sage frequently? I do, um, but my hometown is very rich in history. Mm -hmm. um, we've had, and it's it's not good history. <laughs> like, okay. it's dark history. We've... Um, We've got places in town that were uh, stops on the Underground Railroad. Um, it was native settled. Like, if I go from bottom up, there was native settlements here. Um, the War of 1812 was fought here. Um, there was a lot of um, rum running and bootlegging okay. that happened here, um, the Underground Railroad. So it's a lot of it's a lot of dark stuff, right? That's and odd. It's so it's one one location for so much. It's crazy because like if I walk, it's funny because I've got this spirit. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk your ear off now. I've got this <laughs> um, That's what we're here for. Yeah. This restaurant that we investigated um, years ago. And there was a gentleman that came through and he was from um, like that rum running era. And um, we, it was funny because myself and, a, and my friend Jacqueline, my friend Jacqueline's also a psychic. 
uh, or not a psychic, well, psychic medium. She's actually really good at both, but um, she named him Merv. And so we just kept calling him Merv. Like it was just <laughs> funny. That was so um, that was probably about four or five years ago. And it's funny because when you go upstairs to the upstairs patio of this restaurant, you can feel him sitting up there all the time. So I um, was walking back to my vehicle from the park house one night and the park house is right across the street from this restaurant. Okay. And it just, everything felt, you know, when you feel like you're being watched, I, I, that's what I felt like the minute I walked out of the building and I was like, Oh God, I want to walk to my car. Like my car is a couple blocks away. And all of a sudden, I literally could feel Merv at my side, and and put and like like put his arm through my arm and said, "Come on, let's all walk you to your car." And I was like, "So bizarre! Like it's so bizarre the spirits that you get kind of attached to, right?" That's funny. That's <laughs> and funny. and people people would think I'm nuts, but as you go walking down the street, talking to yourself, <laughs> talking to myself, yeah, with your arm out. <laughs> Or even telling this story, like I can tell the story on this platform because, you know, everybody knows I'm nuts that comes to listen to the Most show. Most of our so everybody in here is nuts, so yeah, we're all good. that's right. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, at any given time, if you're walking along the river, you can feel, like, for a, psych for a psychic medium, if you're walking down by the river, you can feel all the different types of spirits from all the different um, time frames, It's really, wow. it's really bizarre. It's cool though. Now see the only location that I've been to that was similar to that was like, and I described it as like an onion having layers. Yes. Okay. Like Shrek, you know, yeah. but it was when we were in Toledo in the investigation that you couldn't be there with us. And I was, that was the first time I'd come in, into a location like that. And I was all kinds of confused. It was so weird because it was like, okay, none of this is making sense. And it was all just like, boom, and, and all at once. And yeah, jumbled up. And Jay kept saying, well, what do you feel? What do you feel? And Jason said, what are you getting? What are you getting? And I'm like, okay, guys, you got to give, give me a minute because I'm getting really confused is what I'm getting. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it was weird. It's weird. But I will say that the spirits up there, because the one time that we did that experiment with the park house, mm -hmm. and I, you went live and I chimed in. Yep. Everything was so crystal clear. Tina Marie says, they only think you're nuts, Tina. Yeah. <laughs> Have a little girl and go skipping through the cemetery together. Yeah, people actually got in the car and left when they saw me. Oh, I can bet. <laughs> They're like, that lady's completely lost it. <laughs> you know what I remember the most about Park House when I did that? <laughs> that came through so clear was the people sitting on the porch in the rockers. Which is so funny. Because I kept telling you the porch and you're like, there's no, there wasn't a porch, but you hit, but you went around back and there it was. And there's a porch. Yeah. Yeah. Now that was a newer one. I don't know if there was one built, but you know what's now that you say that. Wow. There is like a sister house to the park house further down the road, probably about 40 minutes down the road, if you follow the river, mm -hmm. and it's the John R. Park Homestead, that building has a porch, and you said it was right on the water. Mm -hmm. I said it's it was got right a porch. On the porch. watching the water. Yeah, it's got a porch right on the water with rocking chairs on the porch. Really? Yeah, that just dawned on me right now. Oh, wow. Yeah. Weird. 
we've never investigated that place. They won't let us investigate oh, there. It's kind of sad. Ah. Uh-huh. Would they let you, are you, can you like go there and just like do a drive-by? <laughs> I guess well, the you way can, it. it's a museum. So you can actually go into the museum and walk around. So if, like for you and I to go in there, we'd be like, whatever. We'd just be reading okay. the whole time we're there anyway. <laughs> But you can't bring um, you can't bring equipment in. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But and you can't do it at night, right? You can only go during visiting hours. But it's really cool. We've got a lot of really great museums around here. That's cool. Yeah. That's. I want to go. At where Tina Marie lives. She's got a really cool cemetery that I want yeah. to go to. You've never. I've never investigated a cemetery. I did my first one this October that just passed. Did you? Yeah. I see. I'm I'm confused, and you guys can chime in in the in the chat. I don't understand. If I pass away, why would I want to stay at the cemetery and hang out there? When I could come to my house and, and scare the shit out of Jay or Hunter. <laughs> I mean, you know, be with, be with family. Mm-hmm. Because I, I just I don't understand it. I've never, this is my home. This is where my family is. I was never at that cemetery before. I, I don't understand why people would go, would would think they would stay at a cemetery. Would stay at a cemetery. <clears throat> that yeah, was always my thought as well. Yeah, I don't get it. Yeah, Team Reese's is the trifecta. Ghosts, yep. is and UFOs. I know. I can't wait to go. I know. I really can't wait to go. I wouldn't go right now because it's too freaking cold. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't. I can't go. And by the sound of it, I'm not going to be able to go anytime soon. <laughs> But I can remote in. That's true. Yep. You had your, I don't know what made me just think of this. You were talking about not going soon. I was thinking, oh, the vaccinations. Mm -hmm. Did you have your second one yet? I haven't gotten my first. I thought you had. Mm -mm. Nope. Uh, I'm not in healthcare anymore. That's right. So people that were um, working in long-term care facilities and st- and um, or um, like if you uh, worked in a like in a home where there's special needs, right? Group facilities. Group facility, yeah. Like those okay. people are getting their vaccinations first. Okay. So like Jax has that hers. Just popped into my head. And I know Megan had hers. Megan had hers. Yep. I saw that. I don't know if you remember our, my friend Kim that used to investigate with us. Kim Kim. Kim the OSPH. Yes. That was Kim. Yep. She uh, she got her vaccination as well, so she's good to go. So Maybe I'm happy for them. them. Speaking of Megan, she just popped in. <laughs> oh, look at that! Hi, Megan. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. So back to I, just, I don't know why that just popped in my head, but it did. Mm-hmm. Um, Sam Henderson says that unless we're talking about cemeteries, he says unless yeah. they don't, they were dead. That's a good point. That could yeah. be. Yeah. And then Kat Sullivan says that there's a cemetery in Louisville that her and her mom go to, and she said the history is really sad, so she thinks that's why some are there. So Tina, Tina says they they know they are Sam. But speaking of, they know they're dead, but there is a pull from something there. Hmm. Like I know for myself, um, the cemetery that's around the corner from us, my grandmother's buried in. My great grandmother's buried there. Like. There's certain, there's a family, there's a certain family area. And when my, um, 
when we were younger, my great grandmother, I used to sleep at her house all the time. And she lived in the house right next to that cemetery. Oh. So she kind of wanders around the cemetery because we hung out there as kids. Like we hung out, we used to hang out in the cemetery when we were kids. <laughs> You've weird. Been- I know. I'm weird. <laughs> I'm always, I've always been a weird kid. <laughs> but but it's like when you go to visit her at her grave site, she's there. She's there with you. So if I had equipment, I could probably get her to come through. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Cool. Uh, but uh, that's why I assume that she's there is because we, that was a place that we always, we would go for walks and bike rides and stuff like that. And it was just comforting. It was very peaceful. Now I will say that cemeteries are very peaceful. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> they have like the, usually I know down here they have a lot of pine trees in them or cedars or something like that there. And I know that there was there's some symbol semblance for that. And I can't remember what it was um, for pine trees. Oh yes, the cemetery. I can't remember what that was. Um, but I they're they're just really really peaceful. Mm-hmm. When we go up towards like um towards Eaton, and there's the cemetery that Jay's dad is buried at, and then there's another one that looks almost identical to it over on the other side. And they're this sounds really, really weird. They're like almost they're peaceful, they're calm, they're quiet, they're almost welcoming. Yeah. And I know that that's that may be a really bad choice of words. Um, no, but I understand. I understand. Okay, because <laughs> I'm like, this is sounding really bad, but it, it doesn't. Here, come hang out. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome uh-huh. to my weirdness. <laughs> you, Ashley says, "I'm glad I'm not the only one who thinks uh, about cemeteries being peaceful." Mm-hmm. Ashley, we went. Tina and I went to. I've been to it twice. Tina's been there once to the witch's grave, mm-hmm. which is all there at Ashmore. And I know Ashley's been there. Um, that one was even peaceful. Very much so. Yeah. Which I found kind of, I didn't think it would be. The only cemetery that I've ever been to that wasn't peaceful, it had a really strange um, feel to it, was there was um, one that we went to, uh, myself and Jax and my friend Jacqueline, and it's about two and a half hours north of northeast of where I'm at, um, and it, in Lucan, Ontario. And it was there was a very tragic, um, tragic story of a family death, and we were kind of investigating that. It's what's that? I, I was just saying hi to Mama D. Oh, <laughs> so it was. Um, it's well known in our area, like for. Um, for anybody listening from our area, it was the uh, Donnellys. And um, it, it was the way that the graves were set up in the cemetery. Like these people were, this family was kind of persecuted by the town. And um, the people that persecuted them, their tombstones, like it was like there was, the Donnellys were here, like in the middle. And it was almost like a T or like a cross around them. The families that persecuted them were buried around them this way and this way. Oh, it was just- so right. It was very unsettling. Like I, I was very upset. I, I just said, we need to get out of here. Like I couldn't do like Jackson and I were kind of wandering around and taking pictures and researching and, I'm like, here's another family. Here's another family. And then when we looked at, where all the families were as we were looking at gravestones, we're like, oh my God, they're completely surrounding the Donnellys. And yeah, like it was just purpose. Huh? You, that was done purposefully. It was done on purpose. Yeah. 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 And like you can't even get away from us in death. Yeah. That's what exactly what it felt like. It was so, I was just like, I was mortified. 
Like I can never come back to this place. It was very, it was very upsetting. So um, I'm sorry, everybody. I'm not keeping up with the chat because I'm on my phone. That's what I'm so, trying to pull. Um, and I'm going to mispronounce your name. I'm sorry. Dorius. Dorius. She says pine trees are a symbol of immortality. Immortality. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Kat says, when, we're, when Jay and I are ever in Louisville again, go to Eastern Cemetery and tell us we feel different. See, I'm trying to catch up. Give me one moment. I know. I'm like, mm, trying to read as fast as I can. With my glasses on, so I look special. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I have mine on all day, so I took them off to do this. I'm like, why? Um Tina, I don't know if Jay and I are coming to Revenant Con in May or not. Um, without going into a whole lot of detail, and I was going to do this at the end of the show, but I'll go ahead and do it now. I really, really want some good vibes and some good luck and well wishes my way for tomorrow, maybe Friday. So, please. <laughs> <laughs> it's not medical. I got my medical back yesterday, and that, that was okay. Well, kind of okay. Manageable okay. Manageable okay. I've got my, my biopsy, and everything came back fine on my bronchoscopy. But I've got the synophilic, I think it's how they pronounced it, asthma, which I was looking it up, and it says it's kind of rare. Yay, me! Um <laughs> that now I have to have injections every two weeks. That dupixent, du, du, dupixent, du yeah, dupixent is what it's called. So I'm hoping the insurance pays for that. And I've never had to have an EpiPen before in my life. I have to have one of those now. So it's like I'm. I'm I'm not trying to get upset about it because it's manageable. Once I get on the medication and it starts doing its thing, hopefully I won't be getting sick. I, I won't have these flare ups like every two weeks that I'm having. And now mm -hmm. um, I did find out that that's the, what's causing my temperature to spike because that's what this is. It, it affects your, immune system. It's not an immuno disease, but it affects your immune system. So it, it it's in your lungs and it affects your allergies with your lungs. So my allergy is mold. So I actually have to be kind of careful in places we investigate now. Mm -hmm. um, mask may be a pretty good thing for me from now on in locations. In certain locations, yeah. I have to watch where I go. And Jay and I were talking about that and Jason last night. And I was like, well, I haven't had to use my my nebulizer when we investigated. I've not done that. He goes, yeah, you did. No, I haven't. He goes, yeah. He says, you and Tina both used it at OS, or the Hales Bar. Uh, Hales Bar. I was yep. like, we sure did. And it was wet. It was and cold. bad. I and that's, I was like, you're right. That's what, <laughs> that's when I realized how bad my ass, like, I don't have asthma, but I get, um, like, once in a while where I can't, I have a, a, I have an inhaler, but it's not something I need to use every day. Yeah. So, yeah, if it, go sorry, no, go I, I, did, I didn't bring it with me there. Because I wasn't used to using it. Like, I very seldom use it. So I had to use your... Thank God. <laughs> but I do have to... When I go to see Bob in Florida, I have to bring it with me. Because if it's really humid, I'm out of commission. Especially if we're doing something, like, some kind of physical activity. Like, if we're kayaking or if we're doing lighthouse tours and stuff like that. Where I've got a lot of stairs. I, yeah. I, yeah, I need to use it. I usually use it halfway up and then I use it at the top again. 
<laughs> going up is always harder than coming down, isn't it? Yeah, coming down's fine. <laughs> yeah, I've got no uh, problem. That's going up is the issue. Now they um the first injection that I get, I have to stay at the office. I have to get it at the office mm -hmm. and I have to stay there for two hours afterwards. Yeah. Make sure you don't have a reaction. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping they let me sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and then the second one I get, I have to have there at the office also, but I only have to mm -hmm. stay an hour. Oh, that's good. And I start getting them by myself. And I asked her, I had to go sign the papers today for the insurance and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I asked her, I said, okay, I'm, I'm a big wuss. Let me ask you this. I said, how bad is this shot going to hurt? Because <laughs> I am the world's biggest baby. And she's like, oh, it doesn't hurt hardly at all. <laughs> That's why I looked at her and I said, it's a needle. <laughs> you won't even, you will never see the needle. Oh. It's a little tiny needle and you just push it into your skin. It barely, it doesn't go in very far. And I told her, I said, well, on the, they're called auto injectors or something like that. But I told yeah. her, I said, on the website for Dupixin, they need to fix that then because it showed a needle that was that long and it literally had something dripping out of it as they're showing you. And I said, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> this girl's not doing that. I don't know that I can do that because I am terrified of needles. This giant needle. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. And then, you know, it, it shows you and it's in this, it's in this like round tube and it's got all kinds of like, um, oh, it kind of reminds you, you know, when guys get cigars in that tube, mm -hmm. it reminded me of. Yeah. And you got to push it in your leg and you got to keep it there and not move until all the medicine goes down. Oh, okay. So they call it, it's an auto injector. So when I have my first one, I'll let y'all know. <laughs> but like this morning I had to use, I got up, I had a fever and I was coughing like crazy. So I had to take time and I'm not worried about going to work with the fever with this because it's nothing contagious and it's not COVID. Um, it's, it causes you to run either a mild fever or a high fever. It can spike. So I just popped some time and all. I stayed home for a couple of hours, did two breathing treatments <laughs> with the nebulizer, and then went on into work. And I was okay. I had to use my inhaler later on in the day, but it's real wet outside. Yeah. Even though it's cold, it's real wet. And I think that did me in. Hmm. So... Susan said she did an iron infusion that took nine hours. That's about right for those who schedule those at work. Oh, wow. That's about right. My cousin Sherry is in the room. I haven't talked to Sherry in a long time. Her, um, I went to go get the first reading I ever got probably eight years ago um, from somebody that was trying to come on to JMI's team at the time we were just starting up and she's like, Oh, I can be the medium on the team. I'm like, okay, I don't know that we need a medium. Ha <laughs> ha. Little did I know. Um, <laughs> so funny, but we sat, she sat me down in her room and she played like Indian music, like um, chanting and like American Indian type music. Yeah. And it was low and it was in the background and I'm like, kind of, checking things out and she sits in front of me and I hope you don't mind me telling this Sherry. Um, she was telling me about different things and I did not know her. She did not know me at all. Um, I was wearing a necklace. There was a black pearl that I had gotten from my mom when she passed away. And it was like underneath my shirt. You couldn't tell what, you know, that it was there. And she told me that my mom was happy that I had the necklace. I said, what are you talking about? I have forgot that I had it on. And wow. She was the, and I even had, when we left, I had, we looked through all my pictures on Facebook. to See if it was, if you could see it or anything. And you, at that time you couldn't, because we were kind of new to Facebook. Wow. It was really weird, but she was really good. 
but she came to me and she, she kind of looked at me and she goes, there's somebody coming through and I, I'm not understanding what's going on. And I said, well, I said, and you know, now I sit and think about this. It's kind of funny what I said. I said, well, what is she doing? She says, well, give me a minute. I'm, I'm, it's, it's not making sense. And she just kept looking. She's kind of looking past me. And I said, well, you know, sometimes it may not make sense to you, but it'll make sense. Maybe it'll make sense to me. That's and at funny. that time, I, isn't it though? And it did, it made complete sense to me because it had been maybe a month, two months since Sherry's mom had passed, my aunt. Mm -hmm. And she said, there's a lady coming through and she just keeps sticking her hand out and she's saying something, but I don't understand it. I said, well, what's she saying? She says, I, just, I don't think I'm understanding it right. But she's like, she's putting her hand out like, like a greeting. And I said, well, what's she saying? And she goes, she's saying Rui. And I just busted out in tears. Because Sherry's mom was one of my favorite aunts. And I, I, she goes, what, what did I say? What did I say? I said, that's my Aunt Faye. She's like, no, she, she said Rui. I said, her name was Rui Faye. Nobody ever called her Rui. Wow. Was but she that was that was her way of making sure that I knew who it was. Yeah. Yeah, it was really cool. Because that just and she said she she goes, she's she's really strong, but she's she said she just coming she just keeps putting her hand out and wanting to like in her introduction like introduce herself. Yeah, she just keeps saying Rui, Rui. And she couldn't figure out why what she was saying because it sounded different. But she yeah. was saying her name, which is really cool. Not funny. Yeah. And now I think about that. The things that I said to her are things that I tell other people now. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. Because I haven't thought about that in a while. That's really I had um there's somebody that I go to once a year to see to get a reading. Cause you know, we can't read for ourselves. So, um, she's, she's awesome. She mentored me and really helped me when I was coming along. And, um, one of the first things that, um, one of the first times she did a reading for me, she says to me, I've got this lady and she's explaining something. She goes, you know, she's sick and her daughter's at her bedside and holding her hand and blah, 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 and telling her it's okay. And, didn't really think anything of it because we were in a room full of people. There was probably about 15 of us in the room. And I'm like, well, it could be my grandma, you know, it could be my mom with my grandma. I'm not sure, whatever. And all of a sudden she got up and she said, okay, I have to show you what she's showing me right now. And maybe this will clue in for somebody. And she started doing this little jig. Now my girlfriend, Adrian is a couple years younger than me. She's she's stunning. She's got big blue eyes, long blonde hair, like perfect smile. She's just absolutely stunning. And she's dancing around the room like this little old lady jig. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, she's fun. I like this little lady. She's so fun. And I'm like, oh my God, that's my grandmother. And I started, oh. I started, sobbing and she's like it's for you and I said that's my grandmother and I said my grandmother every time she heard mu music she would jig she would do a little jig and there's no way Adrian no way Adrian would have known that absolutely like it was just so bizarre so as soon as she did that I'm like you know what this girl is legit and I uh that was probably about eight years ago now. And I've been going to see her every year ever since she's just, wow. and, and the stuff she says to, and she'll say that to me all the time. She'll say, I'm not telling you anything that you don't tell other people. You just ain't listening. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thanks. Sorry. That's You're right. True. That's true. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. As much as like, I would love to have my mom come through and I would love to be able to like to sit down at my table I would even pour her a cup of coffee mm -hmm. knowing, you know, but that's just, she drank coffee from sun up to sundown mm -hmm. just and just have a chit chat. But I can never, I feel her around me occasionally, mm -hmm. 
but I never, the first time I ever felt her around me um, was <laughs> I was in the shower, odd place I know. <laughs> and I had my back turned to the water and I was just kind of standing there. It was early in the morning and I felt her touch the back of my head, like pat the back of my head. Like you go, eh, eh. I, cause I, I don't know if I was, you know, nodding off in the shower or what, but it scared the crap out of me. Because I never exactly who it was. <laughs> it was weird. <laughs> that's and that's funny. probably been 11, 12 years ago. Really? It's been a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Which is funny because even as much time as you and I spend together, she's never come through to me. Mm -mm. Like, same thing. Like, I can feel her around you once in a while, but she never has any messages or, like, she's just, she's chilling. Just chilling. And that's fine with me. Mm -hmm. That's fine with me. Well, you must not need anything right now, right? Right. <laughs> that's, the way I, that's the way I look at it. That's true. She must be okay with everything that's going on. <laughs> yeah, our messages come through when we need them. So, you know. When we need them and not when we want them. Exactly. And that's why I feel bad when I have people come for readings because I, I like the last lady that came to see me, I felt terrible because she wanted to speak to someone specifically. And I had three people wander into the room. And I told her who they were. Um, I, I said, I'm getting this type of a, like a, I said, it's, it's funny. It's like an uncle feeling, but it's not an uncle. So it would be like if your parents had good friends that you called an uncle. Mm -hmm. It was, that was the type of feeling. And I explained what he looked like. Nope. I said, okay. So I've got another lady here, you know, that this is what she looks like. She, she may be a good friend of yours. Like, I'm not getting a family feel at all. Nope, don't know who it is. I'm like, okay. So by the third time, I'm like, I've got one more in the room, and if you don't know who this is, I, I, I don't know what more I can do. I'm really sorry. Like, I wish I could tap into who you want to speak to, but I can only tell you who's come into the room. And she didn't know any of the three that were there. And I thought, okay. And I couldn't read her to save my life. We sat and we had a nice cup of tea together and had a good chat. <laughs> um, but at the end of the hour, um, she went to pay me and I said, oh no, I'm not taking your money. <laughs> I didn't do a reading for you. I picked right. up on all these people wandering in the house that you don't know. <laughs> you didn't know. They came but, with you, but you don't know them. <laughs> yeah, like. It was just weird, but um, yeah, I said, "Oh no, I can't charge you," and it, yeah, I felt terrible <laughs> for not being able to, you know, connect to any. I couldn't connect to spirit guides. I couldn't connect to anyone. Wow. So, mm -hmm. do you see people's spirit guides very often? Once in a while. Mm-hmm. We um, were I, um, uh, Silcon the last time Jay, Jason and I, and it was so funny because we were sitting at the table at the Mexican restaurant and one of the gentlemen with us, um, Scotty, I kept looking, he was sitting at the end of the table. He was like two people down from me, but at the very end of the table, there was somebody sitting there and I kept looking down and I'm, and I'd look over, I was like, nobody's acknowledging you know, because I figured if Scotty saw him, he would know, you know, that he's not acknowledging him either. I kept looking. <laughs> and I was like, so I finally, I said, hey, who's the guy at the end of the table, Scotty? He goes, what does he look like? He got like real serious. I told him what he looked like. He goes, you're seeing my spirit guide. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, okay there I feel better <laughs> all right <laughs> but that was kind of cool that, that was it. Yeah. there's one girl that comes to see me quite regularly like every at every three to six months she'll pop by um 
and her spirit guy comes through so strong. And it's funny because it almost looks um, angelic. Like she almost looks angelic. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Yeah. And she's like that one. I can say every time she walks in, her spirit guides right behind her. Um, and you can see her. I've seen um, animals once in a while. Hmm. Um, but not, I don't know. My guides talk to me more than their guides, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm way out of practice, though. I haven't, because we've been in lockdown. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't been allowing anybody over. So I'm way... And I mean, I haven't been doing investigations or anything, so I'm starting to kind of go dormant. I hate to say it, but I'm but, like in hibernation. Well, it was funny because we went to Randolph County a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time that I've had a ch really had a chance to use my abilities. And there were so many people there. And there was, there was a particular person there that I was having a big issue with. And it was just their, their energy. Mm -hmm. It sucked. <laughs> and <laughs> I finally, I just, the lady that invited us asked, she says, what do you keep looking in the other room for? I said, there's somebody over there that is just like, she says, putting off bad energy. I said, oh, my God, yes. I said, I don't even, like, it almost makes me nauseous. It was awful. And I couldn't figure out who it was. Because there was probably maybe 10 people in that other room. And as soon as she crossed the threshold into the room that I was in, I was like, oh, God, that's her. There and it I, is. <laughs> I, literally, I literally left the room because I couldn't. I, I was like, I have never been around somebody like that, but it was that bad. Now, here's a question. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been around someone who attracted you to them? I'm going to say yes, but I think that it is more of a um how do i how i it's almost like attracts like okay so i don't think it's exactly what you're talking about see like when i'm around someone with energy that i don't like i almost you can see where my body will move away from them like it repels mm -hmm. But I was recently, and I didn't realize it until recently, there's somebody that I talk to frequently, um, and I, I have to get, like, right up on, on top of them to talk to them all the time. And it's really weird, like, because I'm not like that at all. No. But it's almost like I gravitate toward the energy. Yeah. It's the it's only good. way I can explain it. it. Mm-hmm. Like, I've got to really be careful. I'm like, oh, my God, I didn't realize. I didn't realize that I did it. And then I thought about it afterward. And, right? Like, I'm surprised this guy hasn't looked at me and said, what the fuck is your problem? Like, <laughs> get away from me. But it's, um, yeah, it's really weird. I've not had that before. I've been, like, you know, attracted to someone. But like I said, it's usually like attracts like. Mm-hmm. Um. And that's usually what it is. But yeah, like, like some of my girls, if I'm really, if we're on the same page, we've always got to sit close to each other. Um, like if Jacqueline and I are both transitioning at the same time, we got to sit close to each other all the time. We got to be with each other all the time. But Adam says sometimes that's okay, Tina. Oh, thank you, Adam. That makes me feel better. Because <laughs> I was like, this guy's going to think I'm nuts. <laughs> Have I always done this or am I just starting to do it recently? Like, this is crazy. So, but. Mm -hmm. 
I've not, I've not had that. I've been repelled, like you said. Repelled, and yeah. I've been, I've been like, I'll take a step back, or like I'll look for the exit. <laughs> how, how can I get out of here? I've done that. But I this start lady, coughing. Yeah, I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, get them away from me now. <laughs> literally made me nauseous and I thought I was going to yeah. puke and I had to leave the room and I had never felt like that before. It was really, really weird. Wow. Oh, see, I get, maybe I just know a lot more negative people than you do. <laughs> I wouldn't say that, but I'm very, I'm, I'm very cautious. Yeah. Um, Adam says, agree both towards and away. It's our empathic side taking over. Yeah. And I've always been like my empathic side always guided me before anything else. Um, my mom used to always say all the time I was a very sensitive child. And she used to say that I'm very emotional and very sensitive. And I look back on it now and I'm like, well, that's because I was empathic. Right. Um, and, and she'll say that now, too, like now that she kind of understands. It took her a while to kind of understand the whole psychic medium thing. <laughs> yeah. um, but looking back, she looks back on different things now, and it kind of makes sense for me growing up, um, different things that I would say or do or um, the way I would behave. I've always been very, very open um, to people. Like, it's funny, with spirit, I can shut it down like, like at the drop of a hat. If I don't want to feel spirit anymore, I shut her down and that's it. With people, mm -hmm. I have a really hard time. Yeah. So I get I get in trouble at work all the time because like and my thing is I, I can't be rude to someone. It's not in me. If I'm rude to you, you've really pissed me off. <laughs> you have really deserved it. Um, I get in trouble all the time because I can't be rude to someone that's talking on the phone, especially an elderly person. You know, they're wanting you to hurry up and do these calls one every minute and a half, two minutes. Well, I can't, there's some calls, some calls you can get out of there in 45 seconds. Yeah. You know, boom, boom, boom. They know what they want. And those are usually younger people. They're calling on their way from the from the doctor's office to the car or something, you know, they've got that little time window and they blah 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 blah. Okay, let's do the blah 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 blah. Okay, we're done. You know, everybody's happy. But occasionally you get that elderly person and they just want to talk. Hey, they're and, lonely. Yeah. <laughs> they just want somebody to talk to. I almost said, I can't, I can't be rude to them. Well, you need to get off the phone quicker. And I said, I can't. Yeah, I said, I'll just have to get dinged for that because I cannot be rude to them. I may be the only person that they talk to all week. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to be that person because I hear those people around me and it, I just cringe because they're rude and I can't handle that. But I always, I've always done it. I don't want to, I don't want to, Treat somebody, I, I treat people the way I want them to treat my parents or my grandparents, my husband, you mm -hmm. know. I, I, can't, I don't want to be rude to anybody. But like I said, if I am rude to you, there's a reason. Yeah. There's a reason for it. Unfortunately. <laughs> well, on that note... <laughs> It's almost nine o'clock. It is, isn't it? This hour went by fast. It really did. Mm -hmm. uh, so, please, good thoughts for me this week, the rest of this week. I'll keep my fingers absolutely. crossed. Absolutely. And cross your fingers, cross your toes, cross everything. Cross your eyes if you need to. I really could use it. <laughs> so, and then hopefully next Wednesday we'll have something to tell you. If I don't tell before, we'll see what happens. <laughs>
We've yeah. got to do readings one day soon, too. We haven't done readings in a while. No, we haven't. Let's do things, Adam. Let's do, you want to set up to do readings next week? Sure. As long as I'm feeling better. And I should be feeling better because they've got me on steroids. Okay. They put me on them. Take four pills for three days, then three pills for three days, two pills for three days, one pill for three days. Wow, that's odd. So I figure I'll look like the Hulk by the time this is over. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do readings next Wednesday. Okay. And we'll put it out there. And I'll tell you what, even if I'm not feeling well, we'll still do them. I just may not be as on, but we'll do them regardless. All right. That sounds good. Okay. All right. So, everybody, we will see you here 8 o'clock next Wednesday. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.